guys, James here today and welcome back to another Sims 4 house building video. Today we're doing a tiny studio loft because I, I don't know, I was just Google image searching as I usually do and I found an image I was like, you know what, this looks kind of cool. It was actually, um, if you know the, uh, what is it, like the sunshade that came with uh, Get Together, where it's like that sort of uh, greenhouse kind of glass roof sunshade thing, it kind of looked like the, the picture that I found had that on the interior and I was like, that's really cool, I'm going to use that on the inside and it's going to be sweet and then I realized that it was way too big for this build, like it, it was way bigger than I thought. I thought it was only three squares wide, turns out it's like four or something, way bigger than, than it was. Uh, but that's fine, we didn't end up using it, so that's fine. Uh, I, and basically what I've done here is I've sort of played around with the space, because we've only got, uh, four squares of width in this build, and then it just goes back a fair way. So it's kind of like a townhouse style, uh, studio loft build, if you will, but obviously there's only one townhouse. It's always kind of weird when you have like a four square wide build that's like on a lot just by itself. But I don't know, like you could just just imagine that it was next to a whole bunch of other ones and it would make a lot more sense. But in the, for the purpose of The Sims, you only need one house there. So that's what we've done. Um, it's very, very uh, basic on the outside is what I'll say. It's like I kept it pretty simple, uh, especially because if you imagine this was going to be a wall to wall build, you'd have buildings at the side. You wouldn't have any sort of windows on the sides. Although having said that, I do put a window to the bathroom on the side of the house, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, and then on the front here, we keep it pretty basic as well, like uh, keeping it nice, nice and private. All the big windows are at the back of the house and it lets in lots of natural light. You will see it all coming together. I mean, it might seem, the way I'm describing it right now, might seem like it's a little bit dingy or something, but trust me, when it when it all comes together, it looks pretty good and you'll be like, fwah, fwah, that looks pretty sweet. So this is the second build that I've decided to do in 4K, like uh, the resolution, just because I thought, you know, it seemed to work out okay last time. Obviously not everyone can watch it in 4K, but if you can, you might as well. Uh, otherwise you can watch in 1080p, that's cool too, but I'm not going to judge, but it's just, I guess, because the fact that I can do it now, I might as well. There's not really any reason not to. Um, it takes, it's like no time at all to upload this day and age, uh, which is sweet. And it also, it doesn't take any longer to record. And I actually, I don't even think the file sizes are that much bigger than before because, because of the way I record it, I think the, uh, the sort of OBS settings I have actually keep the files pretty much around the same sort of size. Yeah, there some of them are actually smaller. It kind of, like, the way, the way I've got OBS set up is, um, this is so technical and it's like most people won't care about this, but the way it's set up is it sort of determines the best bitrate to use for the qualities that I, the, the quality I've selected. So I'll always shoot for the same kind of quality and then I'll choose a bitrate that will get the video to look good. Anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore about that because most people don't know what that means, but if you do, it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, so in the, uh, on the interior here, I decided to actually have like a little split level section to mix it up a little bit, not keep it all flat on one level because, I mean, it's such a small space and just, and I didn't want to put any like wall, like big walls on the interior or anything like that. If anything, we want it more open and have more space. And I guess in this case, it means more vertical space. So if we go down a couple of steps and then we have two floors, you have so much vertical space that it makes the whole area feel a lot bigger. Um, and also just doing that sunken little living room area makes it, uh, feel like, like a more defined space. Like that's the space you use for the living area. And then you have the space you use for the kitchen and dining. It just really sort of separates them out that way and makes them much clearer. And like you, you keep them separate, you know, just, just keep them, keep them separate, keep them defined and all will be well. And actually the stairs, I was really happy with how the stairs worked. Um, how they actually managed to go down over the sort of, uh, split level and into the, into the, I don't know, the stairs seemed to work much better than I thought. I, I felt like I was going to have a lot of issues with those stairs, but they didn't give me any. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I was quite happy with them in the end. I was like, you know what? This turned out just fine. And I'm okay with that. So on the interior, we're keeping the, the color palette pretty, pretty simple on the walls. Because uh, if you imagine it as like an apartment, you know, you tend to have a pretty basic color palette. We just went for like a, a blank white wall on one side and the painted white bricks on the other side, which again was also inspired by the picture I found. I'm not actually sure... What I searched for that, I, let's see, that's, uh, small, I think I just searched small, yeah, small loft home, let's see, images, and you might be able to find the image that I was inspired by, oh, there it is, oh, that's a different angle though, it's like backwards, this one, oh, there, there you go, so it, okay, looking at the image now, it's got a similar sort of vibe, but it definitely did turn out very, very different than what that image is, but yeah, you can definitely see, it. so if you search small loft home, you might be able to pick out the image and be like, oh, that looks kind of familiar, maybe he used that one. 
and maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But like I've said in previous builds as well, I tend to like to find uh, a nice element of inspiration and then use that as the, I guess, as the, the seed, if you will, for the rest of the build. So it's like that one image or that one element, I'm like, that's cool, I want to use that. And then we sort of base everything else off of that. And that's what I've done with this. So I use that image, took some inspiration from it. It's not identical. It's actually way smaller than this build. So this build is actually way bigger. That In the picture, it looks maybe only... Oh, it looks way, it just looks way, way smaller than it is in this. Also, one thing you, uh, you'll notice as I start furnishing that I also noticed is that there are, like, the coffee tables and side tables are huge. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense in proper size homes and, you know, larger homes, but uh, when you're trying to do something this small and use, like, coffee tables, there's no room. They don't... They don't fit. Uh, they're, they're way too big. So you'll see what I'll... you see what I did in the end to sort of make that kind of work. Now, I decided to have some plants hanging from the roof because I thought we have all this vertical space. I really do want this area to feel like really green and have a really sort of, I don't know, just really plant sim kind of vibe. Oh, maybe this is a plant sim build. I mean, it's not, but you know, just a really sort of green vibe as I wanted, I wanted to have. So I used these two uh, barrels and then we used that sort of steel girder thing from Get to Work as the support because I was trying to find like a chain or something. Um, unfortunately, there's not, there are chains on other items, but the items kind of get in the way themselves. But I think that actually worked out quite well. It looks like those, you could have those huge barrels supported by that. It seemed to work for me anyway. I was like, you know what? That looks okay. Let's go with that. And it actually looks really, really cool uh, when you're in the game, when you're in game and also just in the screenshots as well. Like when we, when we get to those and I, I just, the, I don't know, the space I think looks really cool. I think the thing I love about the smaller spaces and the smaller builds is that you can sort of detail and decorate them in a way that looks really, really interesting, but not like overdone. Like it's not super cluttered. It's like, it's got all the items in close proximity, but it's not like... I don't know, like if you use a bigger space and you put a load of items in it, it just seems like it's really busy and cluttered. Whereas if you put a lot of items in a smaller space, it can just look really, I don't know, just detailed and just nice. It just looks really, really nice. Um, I guess it's just easier, especially because one thing that I always notice when I start building in The Sims, every time I do this as well, I will start detailing a room and I'm like, there's not enough items to use. Like, especially if you have a bigger room and you start decorating it, you, you very quickly realize, hey, I've actually run out of unique items to decorate this room with that that match and that go with the theme. Like there's very few things that you can actually put in. So when you start using a smaller space, at least for one, everything kind of goes together. And two, there's it doesn't you don't start repeating all the items. So that's quite good. Yeah, so this is where I discovered that no table was small enough to fit anywhere. Uh, <laughs> none of them would fit. Like I was trying to, I was just trying to look for other items I could use. Like, I don't know, maybe like a box or something. But it's like, that looks way too like terrible and shabby. And it says, like, I want it to look nice. Like it's supposed to be a nice, um, I guess a contemporary loft house, you know, like a modern one up to date, not, not like super expensive, but you know, nice, nicely detailed and, and put together and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so then we have a nice little dining table in here. It does fit in the kitchen area quite nicely and then tucks away. I was trying to, uh, for a while, I was actually sort of spinning it around, uh, seeing what worked the best. I didn't want the chairs on like, I wanted the chairs facing each, like, uh, each other so you could look at the other person across the table rather than having them next, like on the the two, like two sides as an L, if that makes sense. I don't know, I just felt like that made, that looked quite nice. And also it doesn't really get in the way because you can still walk around it to the stairs that go down. So I thought that was quite fine. Um, all right, so the kitchen, again, fairly basic. I actually um, put the, yeah, you see, you saw I put the fridge behind the stairs, which I, I made sure to test that and it all worked. And that was great. So I was like, okay, sweet. So we can sort of hide the fridge away, have a nice little counter area here with the stove and, and the sink. Uh, and that's right, there is actually a sink in this kitchen because a lot of the tiny builds that I do never have sinks in the kitchen because, I mean, I guess one, you don't actually need it if you have a sink in the bathroom or if you have a dishwasher. But we don't have a dishwasher in this one, just a sink. Um, but I was like, you know what? We can have a sink there. I think it looks quite nice. And then we put like a little soap next to the sink as well and the kitchen towel and a little plant. Because again, just sort of bringing all the green elements, bringing them together. Making it look, making it look alive. There's also a bin there too, so don't worry about that. Have we done the out? We no, we must have done the outside bin. I think I got distracted. I was probably Google image searching as I did the bin outside. We have the bin and the post box outside, which I'm, I assume we saw earlier. Uh, otherwise, oops. Oh, anyway. So yeah, again, I wanted to use like I wanted like a small table to put next to the dining table there, just so you could put like some some things on it. 
But again, no small tables. Uh, so here I've actually used like these um, bench kind of things uh, as tables because they're like the right size. Like they're not too big, they're not too small. So I've actually put them like sort of underneath that sofa to make them look like they're tables. And then I put items on it, like using move objects to make it look like it all sort of is a table. And I don't know, I, was, I thought that worked quite well. And then I just used a third chair as like a, a little side table here as well, because at least it sort of blended in that way. And then I put a few plants on it. We had that milk uh, that milk jug in front of it as well. Um, and then I thought we'd get some hanging plants because, you know, you just really can't have enough greenery. Not in this build, I'm telling you. This one is where it's at. Gotta, gotta have the green. Uh, I think... In any other house, it might be a little bit overdone, but I'm telling, I'm telling you, hold out to the screenshots, and it, <laughs> I think, it, I think it's worth it. I think it was really, really cool. Uh, so I think this is where I'm. Just, yeah, I'm looking for items that I can put on. The, again, I was looking for items that weren't gonna be, uh, I guess, unnecessary. If that makes sense, like items that you would think that would actually be placed on those tables. Um, just like little clutter items, nothing to make it look too crazy, but you still, I still wanted to make sure I had a lot of color coming through from the decorations and the plants and all that, because obviously all the walls and that are fairly blank. So we want to make sure we have some color and then we have a nice little, uh, little poof here on the top of the stairs. So you could sit there by the window and read a book. Ah, it'd just be lovely. Wouldn't it just sit there on a nice sunny afternoon, have the, have the breeze coming through the doors. Oh, absolutely lovely. Just charming. Uh, so we just got a little plant sort of decoration behind that. Yeah, again, a lot, a lot of plants in this one. And count count how many times I said plant in this video too. I probably said it a lot. Um, all right. I, also, for the longest time, I didn't actually... Like, this is one of the builds where I think... And I think this tends to happen with the smaller builds. Is that I, you, I do the interior first. Like, a lot of the time... And I've said this in many videos as well. It's like, I always build the exterior first. I make sure the exterior looks good. And then I do, like, the floor plan and the interior design. But... When it comes to the smaller builds, I always do the interior first, or at least I think I do, at least in this one I definitely did. Did the interior first to make sure everything fit and it was going to go right before I just started doing the outside. So I, I did all the interior and I don't actually paint the outside of the house until like the very end, like it, until just before I do landscaping. So normally I would have completely finished the exterior, put all the windows in and then worried about the floor plan, but I just haven't done it on this one. So that, that was something interesting that I noted anyway. Actually, this works really well uh, using like a base. Actually, you know what? I didn't actually test that base and I don't know if that works. It looks good though. Uh, <laughs> I just thought about that. I was like, I wonder if that actually works because it, it certainly looks okay. I'll, I guess I'll test it after this video. If it doesn't work, I'll re-upload it. I did uh, notice that I missed... Uh, oh, actually, before I say that, those two, I put those two wardrobes at the front of the house because I was going to put windows there, but I didn't... I actually liked the look of the facade of the house without windows on it. So I kept it really, really simple. I was like, okay, well, we can get double built-in wardrobes there. So there's lots of clothes storage. And um, we have this nice loft area up here with the bed and the desk. Really simple up the top here, just, uh, you know... Just come up here to relax, get away. But you still have a nice big view out over the living room down below. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I, f I realized once I painted the outside, and it wasn't until I, when I was taking screenshots, I realized that one of the walls in the courtyard wasn't painted. So maybe when I go back into my game and test that sink and all that, <laughs> I'll make sure that that wall is painted because, yeah, you'll probably see it in the... I think you'll see it in the screenshots. So if you do point out the wall is unpainted, hopefully I have fixed it for the uploaded version. And that should be all okay. All peachy. No worries at all. So we have a big blank wall on that side of the house, but I was like, you know what? I actually want to keep that fit. Like, I was trying to find something to put on it. And then in the, in the end, I decided, no, let's actually just keep that blank because the rest of the interior is actually fairly busy. Um, with either plants on the wall, uh, mirrors, or, uh, you know, like paintings or all that kind of stuff. So I thought it could be nice just to have a wall that was fairly just blank and, and simple. Um, and I think I think it looks okay as well when we get into the screenshots. I was like, you know what? Actually, that worked quite fine. Yeah, so here I am just trying to choose wallpaper. I was like, I, I did want a brick. I do like the brick, um, the brick look on the exterior of a lot of houses, especially a house like this where it's like a studio loft that's got an industrial kind of theme to it. Uh, and on the inside where we have those painted bricks that are like white. So you could imagine that they've just painted the interior in a kind of dodgy way. Uh, so in the courtyard, we've got a very small courtyard, which I thought was a, a nice fun little thing, especially you'll see this a lot in, you know, urban environments, like in big cities and all that. You Sometimes you might not even get a courtyard, but or a balcony or anything. But in this one, I decided, you know, we'll use this little space. We'll get a nice green wall over there, which is actually something that is, 
I don't know if I'd say it's common, but it's definitely a thing uh, that I've seen around quite a bit is where you have a bunch of pots on the wall, hanging on the wall, and you could grow like your veggies or your herbs in those, or just have, have you know, like little grasses or flowers or anything in there, um, just to bring a, a bit of green into your, like, your little courtyard, which obviously doesn't have any grass because it's just a balcony kind of thing. So I thought that was nice, and then we got those flowers hanging over the edge at the back as well. And now I think we're just going in and doing a little bit of landscaping because I was like, you know what, the lot, first of all, the lot looks really blank, and also the actual build, like, like I said, the exterior is fairly, fairly blank, I, I, fairly standard and not too interesting. I, I'm telling you, the, all the, the intrigue and the exciting bit of this build is on the inside. I love the, the interior. I, really, I think it looks really, really cool. Um, I don't know what I was doing with that sort of arched hedge gateway, but I was like, I don't know, when I, when I was putting the hedge in there, I was like, you know what, let's get a, let's get a hedge gateway. That will look really cool. I don't know what it's for, but it's there if you want to use it. So yeah, and there, there's the post box in the bin on the side of the house, which I thought was quite good because it means it's not in the front of the house and it's not blocking anything or looking weird, but it's nice, to, you know, tucked away, put in there nice and neatly, no worries. Uh, and then... And then I wasn't really sure what to do with the rest of the lot, so I just put some flowers and some shrubs around. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I think like all of the, I guess the idea behind this is it's supposed to be like a a build that you would have. You know, it'd be, it's supposed to be like a townhouse, right? You would imagine townhouses to the left and the right and behind it and all that, so it all sort of be closing. So you wouldn't really realistically have all this room either side of it. But because it's The Sims Four and we do have all the room either side of it, I was like, all right, well, we better put some sort of landscaping in there. Maybe some flowers at the front here, make it look nice. You know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, couple, uh, some ivy up the walls on the sides because we've got because there's no windows on the side of the house. I was like, okay, maybe we should just put something on the side. So I just put some ivy growing up there. Nothing, nothing too insane. It's, again, the outside's pretty basic. The fun all happens on the inside, which we can now see through the screenshots. Well, not the inside. We're seeing the exterior now through the screenshots, and that's how you have to say it through the screenshots. Um, outside's not bad, but I think yeah, I'm way happier. I'm way way happier with how the inside looks. I think it's awesome i love the living area so much i do like the look at the back of the house as well with the courtyard there i think that's pretty cool uh, so here is the bathroom at the front bottom of the house uh i'll test that sink make sure that all works here's a side shot of the kitchen coming in there and i think i i just like and then i think yeah this shot here where you can see through to the living space i'm just like oh it is beautiful or at least i think it is and just another sort of closer up shot of the living room there with the sunken area and the, the tv and all that and that's the same screenshot um, I guess maybe not. Well, apologies for that. Anyway, here's one going the other way. We can see the stairs on the right and the kitchen all through there. And here's just a sort of side-on shot of the, the seating area, which I think looks quite nice there too. And a shot out to the back of the courtyard. I love that. I love looking through the courtyard there. And here's one from the courtyard looking inside as well, which I really, really like. You can see the unpainted wall there I was talking about too, which I'll fix. Here's one from up the top looking down. Uh, so of course you can download this on The Sims 4 Gallery if you search for The Sim Supply, the same username as my name here on YouTube, just without the spaces. Or you can click the link in the description down below. That will take you to the gallery and you can download it there and put it in your game and have a, have a play around with it. Hopefully it will be the work version and not one with a broken sink which I'll, I'll definitely make sure to check that but of course if you like the video you can check out some more of my house builds here uh, click one of the playlists or you can click the suggested video or you can subscribe or visit my website and follow me on Twitter Instagram and um, all the other things that I have that are on the internets uh, but thank you so much for watching guys I will see you next time and have an awesome day